I think the Buddha could not have been in his enlightenment when he died. I don't even know if the Buddha existed. I mean, first of all, did, is there ever any past? And what is this image of the Buddha that appears in this communal knowledge that we have of an apparent society? I mean, it's all bizarre. Everything is completely bizarre in this reality. Um, but then if we assume that the Buddha did exist, do we then assume that the stories of the Buddha are true? Because we know through gossip, like 500 years before anything of the Buddha was written down, and we know through gossip, like you hear one person tell gossip and then another person tell gossip, it can be completely different versions. So who knows what happened to five years of being interpreted by people from mouth to mouth, not being written down. Um, yeah. But I love the Buddha. I love Buddhism. It's beautiful. So many people will misunderstand it and get stuck in it. But the same with non-duality. Back we are to the right teaching, the wrong teaching, the right teaching, the wrong teaching, the middle teaching, the right teaching, the wrong teaching, the middle teaching. Yeah. I mean, there's just so much wisdom in Buddhism. How can we write that all off? Because it's not refined enough or they say this or they say that. I see an image of the Buddha and my heart sings. Normally, some of them are quite ugly though, you know, the statues, a bit deformed looking, especially when you get the plastic ones in those sort of like uh, gift shops. Like, oh, really? You look like that? Well, to many people, the Buddha's teaching stood for something real, even if he did not live. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dogma always follows anything in humanity, eh? Have you ever listened to the Heart Sutra from Buddhism? I mean, it's divinity. It's so beautiful. It's just the nature of humans. It happens in Neo-Advaita, in Advaita, in non-duality speakers, in therapy, dogma and identification and glorification of things is the nature of the mind. What is beyond the mind? And you can you can just forget about all these arguments and just find the gems where you find the gems and just love them for what they are. Like this is a gem and this is beautiful and this is not a gem and then like this is beautiful this made my heart sing. You know I see that image of the Buddha sitting there in silence and I I just hear that beautiful story that I've told many times of um <laughs> The Buddhists that I cannot name, so I'm going to call them Aratnagona. I can never name them. So Aratnagona lived in a forest. And every time someone passed through the forest, he killed them and chopped off their little finger and put it in a necklace around his neck. And he wanted to get to 100. And he had 99. And the Buddha was just about to walk through the forest. And the villagers said, don't, don't, don't go in there. Rat, a Ratnagona is going to kill you and chop off your finger and put it as a necklace around his neck. Don't go in there, the Buddha. And the Buddha just carries on walking through the forest. And, um, and Ratnagona sees him and is like, yes, yes, I'm going to have a hundred tiny fingers. So he chases the Buddha and he chases the Buddha, but he can't catch up with the Buddha. And he runs and he runs and he's panting and he's sweating. It was particularly hot in India, you know, so lots of humidity. So the smell that's emitting off him, because there's also homeless, you know, living in the forest without a shower is quite intense. He's doing all of this. And then he, he gets exhausted and through frustration, he goes, stop, stop walking. I can't catch up with you. You're walking too fast. And the Buddha says, I am perfectly still. It is you that is moving too fast. And that's just beautiful. That's, when I first heard it, I was like, eh. I thought it was like about compassion, I think. 
can't even remember what I thought, but I think I thought it was something about compassion. And so many people can interpret that differently. But from my perspective, it's the image of the Buddha is that stillness that we all are. And the image of Aratnagona is the mind. And no matter how much he tries to get to that stillness, he can never get to stillness. And people could turn that into a religion, into a dogma, into all types of different things. Who cares? It's you, like, what gem can you find in that? Or just ignore it. There's also people speak... <laughs> but you might be interpreting a me now, and so just ignore it. It doesn't matter. But how much can this heart of life love? Who you are is absolute love that loves everything. And then the characteristics the body mind interprets, likes or doesn't like, and that's okay. But like there's this other part of us that just infinitely loves and just wants to vibrate in love with things. I look at the Buddha and this essence, non just as vibrating with love except the ones in the gift shop that are always a little bit deformed looking. Their head is too big, their legs are too big, their torso is too small. And then I'm a little like, pff, pff, 